My name's Alan Hart and today we're going to talk about power flushing. So I've got my new power flush machine here and we've got a combi boiler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a power flush on a combi boiler system. So what we've done, we've put some T's in pipe work here. And first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect onto these T's with the power flush machine and then we're going to flush it through. We're going to heat the water up with a heater on it and we're going to see how long that takes to warm up. So this is all now, it's cold at the moment, um, it's been off for a while so I've made sure it stays cold and then we'll see how we go. So let's get started. So we've got a filter on this so it's going to be very easy just to drain it down. So first of all we're just going to let out pressure out of it. Just let that drain down now. So in normal use, if you've got a combi boiler and you've got your pipes coming down underneath your combi boiler, it may be that you want to just cut some T's in into the flow and return, and then that way you can just flush from that. You can also get a flushing adapter for the pump, so then you can just flush directly from the pump. So what I've done here, I've just got some push fit fittings and I'm connecting my pipes onto it. I use push fit, I use speed fit normally um, because you can just take them back off afterwards and you can reuse them. So I like to use speed fit. So we'll connect to Zozzy's onto this now. So as we can see there we've connected as flow and return with his blue hoses and they connect onto the power flush machine there. So these valves at the top we're going to turn off. So they would normally be for us dump, so when we're starting to dump the water out of it. And then we've got a filling point there. On this I'm just going to use boiler, so I'm just going to use filling no pump boiler, just for, for demonstration of this. And then in there, that's where we'd put us chemicals. We've plugged us pump into that one, and then we've plugged the heater in to this one separately. So on this it's got a filling loop here. So all I'm going to do for now is just fill the machine up by doing that and then that'll put water in the machine. It'll take a while though. So when we look at the machine it's got a minimum point and it's got a maximum point there and then this connection here this is the overflow so if it started to leak water out, it come out of here. So obviously if you add it in the tub that it comes with, it would overflow into that. Or you can connect a hose pipe to that as well. So as we can see here now, the level's going up. I don't know if you can just see it there. You can just see the water level is going up. So we're about here now. So we're probably going to get it about halfway. So we've got the water there now, just above half. And then what we're going to do now, I'm going to put the heater on. And we'll see how long that takes to warm up. So then you put your chemicals in. So you can put whatever brand of chemicals you like in. So for today we've got this um, long life sludge remover from um, Nordstrom, so we're going to put that in. Um, but you could use Fernox, you could use Sentinel or AD, they're all good, all very good for power flushing. So just while we're waiting for that now to warm up. So how this will work is, you've got your flow return here, that'll go into your central heating system. So what you can do is you can isolate underneath the boiler and then this will go around all your heating, all your heating system. So if you've got 10 rads for instance, then you can flush around all your 10 rads. So normally what I'd do is I'd open all radiators. So I'd go around all your radiators in the house. I'd open them all and then I'd put your chemicals in and I'd flush it round. 
and then once you've flushed it all around you can then go do the radiators individually so then how you would do it then is just doing one at a time so flush one rad go turn the next rad on and then turn the last rad off so you've just always got one rad open at the same time so it's coming up a bit now it's temperature we're just over 20 degrees one thing I will say is it's always going to be better to use the boiler if possible to get heat into the system so if you can fire your old boiler up before um, get all the heating system warm then that would that would be much better and it'd make it a bit quicker because obviously doing it with an electric element is going to take longer so i'm not going to connect the magnet lens in on this one but quickly i'll just show you what i've done is i've made a male and male connection and this side is inch and this side is three quarter and then they will easily um, connect the magnet lens to the power flush machine because the hoses for the magnet lens are, are one inch connections and the connection for the power flush machine is three quarter so that connection will just make it really easy so the power flush machine is now about 60 degrees so now that means that tub of water in there has heated up to 60 degrees so now we're going to turn the power flush machine on so there's just a little switch there. So now what that'll do is it'll just pump water around your heating system. So at the moment that one's warm and that one's cold. So hot water's going in there and it's going around the heating system. So you can if you want put a vibra clean in your drill and you can go across bottom at radiators with it you just need to be careful not to chip paint off radiators and then what you do is do that one radiator at a time and just go around until all your radiators are clean you can also on your power flush machine reverse the flow change it the other way and that'll help with cleaning the system as well so once you've flushed all round with chemicals then what you need to do is you need to get that water out of the system so what you do is you turn your hose pipe on and that hose pipe would be putting clean cold water into this tub and then what you do is you'd open one of these valves here and these valves would allow the water to dump out of the system so then what you'd be getting, you'd be getting clean water going in and you'd be getting dirty water coming out and then you'd do that until until that run clear and then what you'd do is you'd go to your next radiator and you'd do that again and you'd do that with all the rest of the radiators on the system until the system is clean. So there's lots of different ways to do power flushing. There's lots of different types of systems and there's different pipe configurations so we're connecting in all different ways. So this just gives you an example of a power flush and this is an easy one because you can get to all pipe work and it's nice and easy. So I hope that was of some use and thanks for watching.